We have three new confirmed positive cases to report in Erie County, which brings us to a total of 32 positive cases. And we have 755 total negatives to report. Two of these individuals are in their 70s and one is in their 80s. We now have two different cases where two residents live in one household. So they have been reported positive within one household. So though we have 32 cases now, we have basically 30 households where we have found a positive case of COVID-19. The investigations continue by the Erie County Department of Health on these and all open cases. The state numbers today continue to be staggering. Today, 16,239 positive cases across the Commonwealth with 310 deaths. That is 1,680 more cases since yesterday at this time and 70 more deaths within the last 24 hours. And we now hear that Crawford County, our neighbors just to the south, have 12 cases, including a young seven-year-old. And they also have 310 negatives to report. Crawford County residents, you can find information at crawfordcountypa.net on their informational Facebook page or by their information hotline, which is 814-373-2503. Ashtabula County has 18 cases and Chautauqua County has 19 cases and two deaths. So please again, stay at home if whenever possible, unless you must absolutely go out. Wear your mask when you are out. Stay at a minimum of six feet away from anyone when you are outside your home. And while you are at home, please remember to complete your census. Census day was one week ago today. And currently, Erie County is at 52% reporting, and the city of Erie is at 44%. As a whole, we here in Erie County are above the national response rate of 46%. So please, if you haven't completed the census yet, I ask you to go to 20, my, excuse me, my2020census.gov to complete the questionnaire. It will take you well under 10 minutes to do. And you can also call the census or you can um, request a paper copy. I also wanted to mention that PennDOT has reopened the I-90 rest stop at the New York State Line within Pennsylvania. Additional cleaning and maintenance will be performed and tourism services are not available there. But I will remind you, please stay home and if possible, do not travel outside of Erie County our environmental task force has received a total of 731 complaints to date, and they have made 145 field inspections. 132 of those were found to be in compliance upon the first visit. I also want to mention fishing. Yesterday, I told you that they decided to open up trout season early. Well, today we've had multiple complaints at those places where people trout fish. A fisher, fishermen and women standing shoulder to shoulder. And that cannot happen. There are great videos and guidelines on the Fish and Boat Commission website. We need you to make sure that you are six feet away from anyone else while fishing and you should be wearing a mask. And I say this as a plea because if people do not do what is necessary and what has been instructed by the Fish and Boat Commission, I fear that they will close down fish, trout fishing season in our state. So if you want to continue to fish, then you must abide by the regulations that have been put forward in terms of social distancing. If you need any more information or guidance on any of these issues, please go to eriecountypa.gov. We have a lot of resources on that page. You can find many, many things, including guidance on fishing and a great video. Or you can always call us at 814-451-6700. And you can email us at ecdhinfo 
That's Erie County Department of Health info at eriecountypa.gov. For anyone who has lost a job to the COVID-19 pandemic, and unfortunately, there are many, many people in our community who have been laid off. The Northwest PA Jobs Connect continues to offer valuable resources for you, and they can support the employers, the job seekers, the youth, and the training providers. Please go on their website at nwpajobsconnect.org. There are many great resources on there, and the sooner that you connect with Jobs Connect, the sooner you're back into the system or even getting into the system for the first time ever, the better and the more uh, quickly they can help you. We know that it's taking weeks for people to get their unemployment checks, but I'm hearing from Northwest Pennsylvania Jobs Connect that they are able to get support to people uh, temporarily for various things that people need help with within days. So please call them or get on their website and check out the resources and connect with them virtually. Yesterday I received some questions about the Erie County Prison, so I wanted to do an update about that. As of 1 p.m. today, the population at the Erie County Jail is 466. This in a jail whose normal population is somewhere around 650 people and often even greater. So I want to thank the courts, uh, the public defender's office, the district attorney's office, and the staff at the Erie County Prison for doing all they can collectively to reduce that population and help us to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in our community. And I also want to give a shout out to our corrections officers, whether they are in the Erie County Prison working or whether they are at our state institutions in Albion and Cambridge Springs. It is a thankless job and yet we are obviously all grateful that they do that job for us. So thank you for serving our community in your way. Now regarding my daily briefings. I hear more and more about people relying on getting information this way from me. And so I wanted to make you aware of some upcoming schedule changes as we approach the holiday weekend. Tomorrow I will still be here at 3 o'clock. On Friday we are moving this briefing up to 11 a.m. And then on Saturday, I will be back at 3 p.m. as normal. Sunday, Easter Sunday, I will have no briefing. And then we will resume our daily 3 p.m. briefings on Monday, April 13th. Finally, all week I have been mentioning that this is National Public Health Week. And our public health has never been more apparent in terms of the work that they do to our community than they have been in these last weeks. This morning, the employees at Erie County Department of Health we're greeted with encouraging words and signs while people practice social distancing, cheering them into work. It was an incredibly emotional outpouring of support for them. Thank you to our West Bayfront, to the Erie, Mar to Martin Luther King Center, to the Gannon University, and to any others that participated. Thank you also to the United Way who has shared their appreciation on social media and really to so many of you that have reached out. I was at the health department today. The people working there, working very hard, were so grateful to all of you for the emails, for the letters and the cards, and just all of the signs of support for them. I cannot tell you how impactful these small acts of kindness are for them, and really the small acts of kindness that are happening all over our community. Remember, if you know somebody who lives alone, give them a call. They need to hear another voice, and so don't just text them, but give them a call and have that conversation with them so that they feel connected. We talk about social distancing, but as I said, it's really physical distancing. We still want to be social with each other and, and check on our neighbors, check on our loved ones, check on those we know that may be quite alone right now. If you'd like to continue to show your appreciation to anyone um, at the health department, you can always email them at ecdhinfo at eriecountypa.gov or you can send them a note at 606 West 2nd, Erie 16507. Uh, now I would like to turn it over to the media for questions. And we will start today with Erie News Now. Hi, good afternoon. A question for you about uh, people coming here from 
uh, out of town. We've received several calls about people uh, coming into our area, uh, believed anyway to be from Pittsburgh, but just coming in to cottages they have in our region, things like that, especially with a, a holiday weekend coming up. Uh, are you aware of complaints of that? Um, do you have any plans to try to cut down on that at all this weekend, or is there really anything you can do about uh, people who choose to do that? There's nothing that we can really do. People own their property. They may have a cottage or a condo or some other um, building here that is theirs, and they are certainly, um, by law, allowed to go to that place. Um, there has been no restriction nationally against people leaving their home county, for example. Um, but I would ask them to do the same that we have asked every other person coming back to our community, whether they're coming back from a winter in the south or whether they're coming back from college or wherever. Please isolate yourself for 14 days. Um, do not go out. If you have people here you know, ask them to grocery shop for you and um, stay in your second home or wherever it is you might be for these 14 days so that we, you aren't bringing more of the virus into our community. Um, if you know people who are doing this, then please give them this advice uh, and ask, actually tell them it's for our community and for the health of everyone else that they do this and we ask for their cooperation. And if they're in a situation where they're just coming up for, say, the, the holiday weekend, would you advise that, if possible, don't? Would you say stay home? They should stay home, just like I'm telling people in Erie County to stay home, to not travel. I'm sure there's people in Erie County who may have um, a cottage in the Finger Lakes, let, let's just say, or, or someplace else, and, and we ask them not to go there, to stay at home. Um, and to stay in our community. The less people travel, the better. So I do ask people just to stay put wherever they're at. Talk Erie, do you have a question for me? Yes, uh, good afternoon. Um, Governor Wolf uh, just mentioned this uh, new order about moving PPE and ventilators out of uh, low use areas into high use areas, probably specifically the Philadelphia area. Are you concerned about PPE and ventilators moving out of Erie County? As you know, um, we have had none of our positive cases end up in the hospital at this point. And I know that our hospitals uh, are the ones who really understand this issue much better than I do. So I'm going to trust um, our health care providers to know uh, what they need and to um, obviously continue to make sure that our community has what they need. But we do know that the needs are great in other places, much greater than they are here, because we've been doing a lot of good things here that have kept our numbers low. So if we need to share temporarily on some of these life-saving devices, I can understand why we would do that. And then hopefully, if we ever get to that point, others would share with us. But I can't really uh, give us a, a specific opinion on that, because that's not my area of expertise. Erie Times News. Hi, Kathy, it's David. Um, there's a new statewide hospital preparedness dashboard that's up on the State Department of Health website. And it does mention that there is one, in Erie County, there is one patient uh, with COVID-19 that's on a ventilator. Um, I would then assume, based on what you just said about the Erie County, no Erie County cases have been uh, hospitalized, that that is one of the travelers from out of town, that that's not a new case that's been hospitalized? Um, it's not one of the uh, 32 that I'm talking about, so it very well could be someone who was brought here from a surrounding county. As we know, our hospitals really are um, that place where people who live in the more rural counties surrounding us come to when they need a higher level of care. So I don't really know the exact um, circumstances around that person, but that's what I would, I guess, assume. Okay. And then a different uh, subject, you had talked about uh, fishing and, and the, the fishermen and fisherwomen standing too close together. Um, what about the golfers, especially with the Erie courses, you know, having that announcement that they are, they are closed? I understand that, that um, the Environmental Task Force needed to go out today and yesterday to, to whisk golfers off the courses. Is this something that's going to be going on statewide? How bad is the problem continuing to be with golfers being on golf courses in Erie County? So we know that people want to get out. They want to do something. Um, you know, I like to cycle. There's no, nothing wrong with cycling. Some people like to golf. Can it be done safely? Probably can be. Um, the state is the one who decided to close our golf courses. They, um, I'm understanding they are continuing to review all of these things. Uh, obviously, I don't think it's great that our people are now leaving here and going into New York State or into Ohio uh, to golf because that just 
continues that travel that we're trying to stop from happening. Um, but I understand that people are looking for something to do uh, when they're maybe not working and they can't go and do many of the other activities that uh, we normally do. So uh, I'm leaving that up to the state, but as long as the state has this um, in place where golf courses have to be closed, then it is our obligation uh, in county government, just as we are with any business, to try to enforce the governor's um, mandate on that. Uh, Jet TV? Yeah, hi, Kathy, Samir. So I want to stick with this uh, golfing issue. So I know the Peak and Peak, uh, I believe tomorrow, April 9th, will be opening up their upper course uh, for golfers to come. So is there uh, a fear from you, I guess, that uh, people from Erie are going to travel up to New York and go golfing there and then possibly contract COVID while they're up there and bring it back? Well, hopefully they won't. Hopefully they, if they go there, I would ask our citizens to very, use very, very good uh, personal hygiene and other procedures. So wear a mask while you're golfing. Um, wash your hands frequently. Take hand sanitizer with you. I would recommend only one person in a cart. Um, hopefully Chautauqua County is making sure that that's happening. Again, this is in another county. I have no jurisdiction over. But if people do the right thing and are very careful how they do it, hopefully they will not be bringing COVID-19 back to our community. I mean, we do know that we have people who work in our community. They may work in our hospitals. They, I know some people work in county government. They work in a number of essential businesses that uh, Wabtec, for example, who's open, um, and they live in uh, Chautauqua County, Crawford County, Ashtabula County, and they travel into our community to work, and then they go home at night. Most of those people are doing just that. They are staying in their home when they're in those other counties. They're coming into work and then they're going back home. They're not out and about um, in many ways that would make them uh, more at risk to our community. But I'm not encouraging anyone to go to another county and golf because if you don't have to go out, stay home. And that is about golfing. That's about anything um, that we might be doing. And speaking of WabTech, has uh, the health department been back out to the facility since their initial visit? We will be uh, checking on WabTech um, again and I'm not sure what the timing on that is, but we're gonna to continue to stay up on um, particularly those larger businesses where we have the greater concern just simply because of the number of people that are working there. So we will continue to do that. And I can report Perfect, on that thanks. after we've uh, completed that. Uh, Erie News Now. Hi, a question for you about trying to do contact tracing. I know it takes a little time once you learn of a case, but of the 32 cases, how many of you successfully managed to trace where you can pretty confidently say you know where it came from, and how many are there where you're, uh, where the county really isn't sure where the person picked it up? So the other day I, I mentioned that we have community spread, but it's, we're talking just a few people, um, uh, two or three. I mean, it's, it's really a few people that we just cannot connect back to a specific uh, person, or to travel. And so we don't think we have widespread community spread, which is obviously very good for our community. And we continue to be way ahead of many um, counties in Pennsylvania that have much um, smaller populations than we do. Uh, but we know that there is that community spread and we know it's still a great potential, especially if people don't continue to do all of the things that we've asked them to do to protect themselves and, and everyone else in this community. So. We'll continue to do that contact tracing as long as we can, um, you know, as long as our numbers are only uh, growing in these small increments and we don't have big, big jumps, and then we will run out of bandwidth in terms of being able to do that. But I'm going to go back to something I talked about way in the beginning and I've talked about a number of times. You should be grateful you have a health department here. I just today was on um, a call with some of our commissioners, county commissioners just to the south of us, a few, few counties down. They have no health department. They know nothing about the cases in their community. They can't get the information. It's very frustrating for them. They can't do any contact tracing. And we have that ability here. So we are in a much better space. And I think considering our population, that's really been a huge um, reason why we've been able to control this as we have it up to this point. Any luck uh, tracing either of the or any of these new cases, and um, how concerning is it that it's older people this time? That it's three people, and you know uh, that are a little up there age-wise. 
I don't know anything about their conditions at this point. I do know that they are home convalescing, and I pray and hope for their full recovery um, from this. But obviously, anyone who's in their 70s or 80s is in a much greater risk category than a person who's in their 20s or 30s. And so um, that's why it's so important for all of us to think about that when we are connecting with anyone older, or even when we're passing anyone older in the grocery store. If we don't have a mask on, we're putting that older person at risk, uh, much more than they're putting us at risk. So we're really doing this for those kind of people in our community who are at, who are at the greatest risk. And when you look at the death toll um, really across the nation and across the globe, uh, the numbers in terms of the death are much greater in those in their 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, and older. So we want to protect our senior citizens, and uh, it does concern me, you know, when anyone gets this, but certainly when someone who's a, a bit older or somebody who has another issue that makes them compromised. Talk Erie. Yes, ma'am. Um, the it's coming up again about reporting at the municipal level. Uh, I know that there's lobbying from various groups asking the governor to release those municipal level and township and borough level um, cases. Uh, what's your take on that? I, I would imagine you would follow whatever Governor Wolf decides, right? Right. So I'm going to go back to this health department thing. You know, the uh, counties that have reported the numbers are much larger counties than we are. They didn't start reporting until they had quite a few cases, and then they started uh, releasing numbers on, at a more granular level. Um, but all there's some very large counties who have none of that information out there because that's all up to the state. Um, there's only six county health departments and four municipal health departments. So we are looking at doing a map here shortly now that we have kind of a significant number of people to report on uh, where we would do it maybe by region. So we would, you know, say we have, we're looking at dividing the county up into a certain number of regions and then saying how many cases in that region. But I think we looked at this a little bit yesterday and we're working on this, but I think when people see it, they're going to be, um, it's going to validate what I've been saying all along. Our cases are spread across the county. They're not specific to one area. We don't see hot spots. And so the value of giving you municipalities, um, in my opinion, sometimes could be worse in terms of the people coming into that complacency that, well, if it's not in my township or my borough or my city, then I don't have to worry about it. And we know that that's not true because people do move between those communities. Um, so we wanted to not give people that sense of false security. And that is actually the main reason for us not giving those numbers out into the municipal level. And uh, I hope people know that the decisions we are making every day are really the decisions of how we save lives in our community and how we make it imperative to everybody that they need to play their part in this. One of the biggest concerns I heard from those uh, commissioners I talked to is that people aren't taking it seriously in their community because maybe they don't have that many cases and nobody knows anything about those cases. So I have the opportunity here to speak every day to our community. I think people are taking it very seriously and because of that, our numbers remain low for our population. Erie Times News? Just as a quick... Oh, go ahead, Joel. You have a yeah. follow-up? Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a quick follow-up. Uh, in, in the state legislature yesterday, uh, a representative from our area was participating in um, in a basically uh, a push to open up more business for uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, the, the the House Republicans especially are pushing for that. Do you care to comment about that? Well, I think it would depend on the businesses and what they do and are they life-sustaining. Um, you know, we've already talked about Wabtec, our second largest employer, and having so many people in that building and how um, worrisome that is to me and so many others. So uh, this is so hard. It's hard on our economy. It's hard on us as individuals. Certainly it's hard financially on people. But this is about saving people's lives and getting control of this pandemic at this particular moment. So if we allow more and more people to go to work, um, and a lot of people are gonna have to go to work, don't want to go to work, um, but they're fearful of losing their job if they don't. So now if we put that on more people, um, I think it's just going to make uh, this uh, virus spread more and, and grow. So I hope that they very, very carefully look at what kind of businesses we're talking about opening. And are they a low risk? 
uh, high risk, you know, I think you have to look at the whole thing um, and really make those determinations. And I hope it's done in a way that is not political, that it's done truthfully on looking at lives and people's health. And, and that is the criteria we look at. Erie Times News. Uh, yeah, Kathy, my daily question, uh, any of the 32 cases reside in a nursing home? Or are they all in, uh, you mentioned they're all households. Are they all in private residences? They're all in, in residences. They're, um, we don't have any, I know there's a lot of rumors out there that we have some kind of nursing home um, uh, incident going on. And, you know, I just heard, was listening to about Beaver County. They have the largest nursing home in Beaver County. has a huge issue down there. Um, we do not have any... Um, information at all about our nursing homes having an issue with COVID-19 in our community. Uh, so uh, I'll continue to monitor that. Obviously, huge concern if that would happen. We all saw what happened in Washington State, and now we're seeing it, you know, even in our own Commonwealth, very close to us. So it's obviously something that nursing homes are taking very, very seriously. And I mentioned yesterday just some of the safeguards that they're putting into place to uh, stop that from happening. I haven't seen my father-in-law in many, many weeks, and that's for his safety and the safety of those people who live with him in uh, the home that cares for him. And that's what I have to continue to realize and, and be thankful for. Jet and, TV. And then a, oh, a different track. I'm sorry. Uh, on the, um, if with, you had mentioned that this week was going to be a very, you know, you had mentioned last week or earlier this week that this was going to be a very rough week. Is there anything to indicate we are going to see a significant increase in cases? Are there a lot of tests out there pending? Is there anything to give you an idea that we may see a lot more cases over the next few days or the next week or so? You know, everybody kept saying this was going to be a very rough week. It's um, not been maybe as bad as I had thought it was going to be. We had that one jump early in the week of four cases. Uh, we had seven total, but three had come in over the weekend, and then there was four in one day. And now we've had a couple days of a couple cases, three today to report. Um, so we're not seeing that exponential growth uh, in cases that so many other places have seen and continue to see. Um, that continues to be a good thing, and I give a lot of credit to the people of the community who are helping us to make this happen. Uh, so um, let's just hope that what I said earlier in the week is wrong and that uh, we don't have a situation here that we're seeing in other communities. I wish I had a crystal ball, though, to be able to tell us you know, what is going to happen, and, and, and unfortunately I don't. Uh, Jet TV, do you have any other questions? Yep. Hi, Kathy. Uh, do you... I, I know earlier, uh, I don't think you were able to answer this, but do we have a rough estimate about how many tests are currently uh, waiting to get results back on here in Erie County? I don't know the number of pending. Um, so you have to remember that these tests are done through our health care facilities. Um, we're not doing them at the health department. Uh, we don't get all the information and actually, um, like most other counties are waiting on the state, we do have some real we have actually very good relationships uh, with our health care providers, but uh, we have, uh, they've been very good about helping us understand the positive cases coming forward. And that's sometimes why our numbers don't jive with the state numbers you see on their website, because we actually have some preliminary information on the positives, but we haven't been getting all that information on the pendings. And, uh, you know, everybody I think is just so busy, and it's just not something that is um, in our wheelhouse of information at this point. But um, I understand people wanting to know that, but in the end of the day, I don't think it really matters in terms of how we're moving forward. You know, we're continuing to move forward uh, just on all the good recommendations we've given to people. So um, that's why we don't have the information, because we don't do the tests. Right, right. All right, I want to switch gears a little bit and uh, speak more along the lines of travel. So I know the station, Jet24, we've uh, had a couple concerned citizens reach out saying that a ship uh, arrived to Erie carrying possibly wind turbines and the ship could have come from Spain. So has the county heard uh, anything about that? And then secondary, uh, I guess, is there any special precautions being taken with freight that is coming into the county? So we've known about this ship for a number of days and we have been tracking it and we've been working with the company who owns the ship as well as the U.S. Coast Guard and uh, other officials and I will, uh, I'm glad to report that uh, everyone has been extremely cooperative. Um, all 
seems to be very good. Uh, the, the crew of this ship is not getting off and coming into our community. Those who are helping with the unloading of the materials on that ship um, are not, they're not having contact with the crew. Uh, the crew at this point uh, seems to be very healthy and uh, that's really obviously a very good thing because one of the things we did look at is what if they got what if they arrived here and suddenly they weren't healthy and we would have to take care of them of course so they're healthy uh, they're unloading and they'll be on their way as soon as they get unloaded and on to wherever they go so uh, all is good in that regard because um, we were informed early about this we did our due diligence um, all of the federal agencies and our local port authority and and everyone has worked very well collaboratively so these are a lot of the things that are going on every day behind the scenes um, and it is just um, sometimes I just feel like it's rapid fire coming at us but gosh the team has just done such a great job in handling these very unusual things that pop up um, and they're doing a great job so feel feel safe about the ship being here uh, all precautions have been taken and um, the material will be unloaded and that ship will be on its way out of our harbor and then uh, really quick before we move on, so I know a couple weeks ago I asked, I'm still receiving uh, messages regarding mail and if anyone, if people should be taking their like special precaution. Obviously you said to wash your hands. So what about if we do have uh, mail or freight coming from those hot spots? Obviously just take those safety precautions as you mentioned, wash your hands, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so um, the studies are showing that the virus really doesn't live very long. They did some studies on cardboard and it doesn't live very long on those surfaces. So I guess the biggest risk would be if you had a mail carrier who was a positive, didn't know it, uh, sneezed on your mail, put it in your mailbox and shortly thereafter you picked it up and, um, and you started you know, un un opening up your mail. Um, but something that's coming let's just say someone in another country you, you mentioned Spain let's say someone's getting some mail from Spain and where we know there's been a huge uh, COVID-19 uh, breakout so that mail by the time it got from here if there was anyone who had touched it in Spain who was positive that virus would be long dead by the time it arrived here so the smart thing to do is um, you know what take your mail get out what you need throw away what you don't need don't touch your hands to your face while you're doing your mail and then um, go wash your hands really good for 20 seconds when you're done opening up your mail and you will be fine. So it's a very, very low risk. Um, and I can hopefully maybe even um, bring in some more information on that because we have a lot of information we've been getting on surfaces and maybe we could do even a little segment on that to explain to people. Perfect, thanks. Mm -hmm. Erie News Now. Hi, one final one for you. I know you talked about earlier uh, the necessity of sharing materials between areas in the state that might need them, sharing PPE or ventilators, things like that. Um, and I know you said certainly you'd be open to it. Have you had any contact from uh, any of those other regions or from the state, any inquiries looking into whether or not the county has things it could send? We've had lots of conversations, um, not only with those in the state, but conversations with Cuyahoga County in Ohio and Erie County in New York and, and others because everyone's looking for those PPEs, um, whether we're talking about gowns and gloves and masks or whether we're talking about bigger items, you know, and so that's been a great thing. There's a lot of sharing of information back, forth, back and forth. When we have found a source, I actually contact um, the National Association of Counties. Uh, I specifically contact some of those county executives and county commissioners that are close to us and, uh, and they're doing the same for me. And so we are all trying to resource together collectively and uh, helping our neighbors out, helping um, our friends out with finding what we need for our community. So it's a lot of good, good work being done in that area. And uh, are there any plans to ship things that are here currently to these harder hit areas while our numbers remain relatively low? So I don't really know what the hospitals are doing and of course they would probably most have that kind of uh, those kind of uh, things, machines and stuff, uh, ventilators for example, that others would need. That's not something that's in the purview of um, the county government. So it would be up to those. And of course we know that two of our hospitals are part of very large systems and I would think that those decisions, whether it be UPMC or Allegheny Health, Ner Health Network, I would think that those decisions would be made from that global picture of that network. So um, that's maybe a great thing for us is that we have a network 
um, that can share even within their network and their other hospitals. And tomorrow um, we, we will have representatives from uh, our health networks on as, as I did last Thursday and so some of these questions maybe could be uh, directed to them tomorrow because they would have a lot more information and expertise in this area than I do. Thanks. Uh-huh, sure. Talk Erie. One last one for you, Kathy. Uh, you know, uh, the national statistics are showing that African Americans are especially uh, getting um, hit hard by COVID-19. You had mentioned yesterday that there's been no racial disparity in Erie County, but has there been any active outreach to African American leaders and to the uh, to the community centers and so on to make sure that your um, that your strong words are getting through? minority community so we've done you know outreach to so many different groups on so many different issues and including our minority communities um, as you know on our resource page at eriecountypa.gov we've done many things in different languages um, we have certainly um, been looking at how we can support our smallest of businesses and uh, many of those small small businesses are owned by minorities and we want them to be viable at the end of the day so um, in terms of their actual health and, and the COVID-19 um, pandemic and the spread of that, you know, trying to reach into the African American concern clergy or other groups like that that would have that specific contact uh, with those people, you know, trying to do that. But, um, you know, we're trying to reach all citizens in Erie County, no matter who they are, where they are, where they live, um, their age, their race, their gender. And, um, you know, we're always open to more suggestions if anyone has any thoughts of how we can reach a group that maybe we aren't doing well in reaching right now. So let us know if we can do better. We want to. Uh, Erie Times News, do you have any final questions? Kathy, yes, I want to go back, um, get a little bit more clarification about the golfers. I just want to confirm that the Environmental Task Force has gone to, to golf courses and, and, and kind of herded these golfers off the course and educated them about this. And can golfers on any course in Erie County expect that that could possibly happen, not just at the Erie City golf courses? Any golf course in Erie County um, is is supposed to be closed per the governor's order. And so um, we would expect that uh, those golf courses themselves would work hard to keep golfers off of the courses, and that would be their first responsibility. Um, we, we, I don't actually know specifically if the enforcement teams have been out to a golf course per se, but we certainly have made calls, I know, to them. And um, we would go out, just as we do for anything else, if we hear uh, that there needs to be someone sent out. I mean, I'll give you an example on the fishing. We heard that there was big crowds at Gravel Pit, and so uh, we did send law enforcement out, county law enforcement out to that site to uh, get people to social distance and, and to do the right thing. So, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, people aren't really obeying uh, what that social distancing looks like, and, you know, I go back to even what I said the other day. If people don't do this, things will get closed down, things we don't want to get closed down. Fishing could get closed down if we don't do this. Um, Presque Isle Park uh, could be you know, closed down if we don't stay uh, social distancing in our state parks. Um, so we don't want that to happen. We need everyone to do the right thing so that we can all still get outside and, and get some fresh air and, and get some exercise and do some of the things that we like to do. Jet TV. And I'll, just one quick follow-up. Okay. Mm -hmm, sure. Uh, Kathy, mm -hmm. I could, um, just one quick follow-up. You had mentioned in your in your remarks about golfing that it's a, it's a state regulation. Has there been any contact between you and the state about trying to make golf permissible? Um, I I have not talked about that, and I'm not out there lobbying for any particular business to be open, to be closed. You know, I am asking questions sometimes when I wonder why something happened and why one entity got an, a waiver and another did not when it maybe seems like they're a very similar business and so I try to advocate on behalf of those kind of questions but um, you know there are plenty of groups lobbying for certain full segments of businesses and I let them do that work. Uh, Jet TV I'll let you can say started with uh, Erie News now I'm going to give you the final question if you have another question. Well, my question was actually just asked, so okay. I am good. So okay, well, that's tomorrow. great. Thanks. Well, thank you all again for uh, being with me today. Thank you, all of those who are viewing and listening out there. 
Thank you for uh, doing your part to stop the spread of COVID-19 in our community. Uh, I thought it would be a worse week than it has been so far, but we're only at Wednesday. Please help us continue to stop the spread and social distance. Wash your hands frequently. Stay home as much as you can. Wear a mask when you must go out. And please stay home, stay healthy, and stay calm.